Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna to show you how to transform these really cute clear acrylic trays. You can use these for serving charcuterie boards. You can use them as jewelry and perfume trays in your closets or your bathrooms. They make a fantastic gift. I'm gonna show you how to create these using actual cake sprinkles. Oh my gosh, so much fun. But of course, you can use just about anything in these, glitter, all sorts of things. I absolutely love this project and it was so fun and easy to do. I hope you guys enjoy this. You're gonna find all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so today we're gonna to be working with two different size trays. I have a very simple eight by eight one that was fairly inexpensive. And then I have a larger 12 by 12 that came with these beautiful gold handles and it was a little bit more expensive, but well worth it because it's so beautifully made. I'm gonna have both of these options linked down below in the description box. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is obviously remove any kind of labels or paper or anything. This one didn't have anything. It just came right out of the box. But this here, this one does have some little labels and stickies and things. Uh, if you need to use your heat gun, that really helps to try it and lift some of these stubborn adhesive uh, stickers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll be right back. All right, next we're going to want to prep the bottom of our acrylic trays. There's not much we're gonna to need to do for prep. All we're going to do is just clean these out with some 91% rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. We wanna to make sure that these are completely free of all debris, both on the bottom, the inside, around. Get them nice and cleaned up. The rubbing alcohol will not be too much. It's not going to really etch the surface of our acrylic. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. Definitely do not want to use acetone um, because if you get it on the wrong spot of this acrylic that's supposed to be shiny, you could etch the acrylic and, and make it look foggy. We don't want that. Normally we would sand the surface of our acrylic to prep for epoxy resin as well. However, this is going to be inlaid into the bottom of this and I don't think that it's totally necessary for us to rough up the surface in order for the epoxy to adhere there. Next we're going to want to measure how much epoxy we're going to need um, to mix to fill both of these. Obviously if you're just working with one just measure out for one but I like to do pretty big batches at one time. So what we're going to do here is we're only going to measure how much we need to fill the bottom of this and we only want to fill it about maybe an eighth of an inch or so high we don't want to fill it too much for that first layer because what we're going to want to do we're going to fill the bottom with our first layer of epoxy we're going to let that cure then we're going to add our sprinkles with an adhesion layer so that they look suspended in the epoxy also so we don't have them um sinking to the bottom and things like that. We want them like suspended in our pour here. So what I'm gonna do is I just have some regular tap water here and I'm just gonna pour in enough to cover the bottom of our tray. You wanna do this on a level surface so you can get an accurate read. And I think that is a little bit too much I'm going to pour a little bit back in. I think that's good. So for this one, for our first pour, we would need about two thirds of a cup of 
mixed resin, okay? Mixed epoxy. So that would be, we would measure two one thirds, mix it together to make two thirds. That's how much we would need to fill this one. But because I'm doing a large batch, we're also going to measure out for this large one as well. So again, we're just going to pour the water in there see how much we need to fill that's actually right on the money okay and then we'll pour that in as well so we can just get one large batch of resin so I'm showing all together I'm gonna need about one and a quarter one and a third a cup resin mixed I'm gonna do one and a half cups just to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure and mix all of that epoxy and then we will come back to pour it. All right, so I've gone ahead and mixed my epoxy. Always make sure you're wearing appropriate personal protection equipment whenever you're working with epoxy resins and always follow the safety data sheet that comes with your resin. So I've got my acrylic trays here and we're ready to pour inside of them. So we want to be careful not to get any resin on the outside or the handles or anything like that. So just be mindful of that. Okay. Also, when you were mixing your resin, what I did was I measured my amounts with water first to mark my lines. So I did for these trays, for the first layer, I did a third a cup of part B and then a third a cup of part A. I first measured and marked that using water, dried out the cup, and then I uh, measured and mixed my resin. It should take about almost 20 minutes or so for you to mix this amount of epoxy resin, okay? We wanna make sure we don't see any ribbons, clear ribbons through here, no streaks, okay? Um, it's okay if we have a little bit of bubbles if you want to let this sit for a few minutes after you're done mixing it. You could do that as well, okay? So I'm just going to double make sure, look at this through the light, make sure I do not have any ribbons. Okay, and now we're going to pour. I'm going to bring you guys down and we'll just let it rip. Okay, so after I pour it, I'm just going to kind of carefully let gravity get this from end to end. This stuff is self-leveling, but I just want to make sure that we have truly enough to coat the bottom here, which we should because we measured. All right, so that's about how much I have for that first layer in there, not too much. I don't even think that is like 1 16th of an inch really, okay? And then we'll do the same thing with this tray, just try to use gravity to spread that out edge to edge. We're just going to run our torch over this really quick to pop any bubbles. All right, so now we're going to let these sit in a safe place to dry. You want to make sure that there's like no possibility for like lint or debris to fall into these. We also want to make sure that they're definitely on a level surface. So make sure you le level out the shelf or the table or wherever it is that you're going to set these to dry before placing them there.
All right, so our tray has been drying for at least 12 hours, and now we're going to pour what will be the adhesion layer for our sprinkles. I don't think I used more than like half a cup of mixed resin for this. So like a quarter cup of part B and a quarter cup of part A mixed together. All right, and I'm just gonna spread this edge to edge using my butter spreader. And then once I've got this all spread out, we're going to sprinkle on our candy sprinkles. Now, I wanna give you guys a little bit <laughs> of my experience here with the candy sprinkles. No, these sprinkles will not bleed in your epoxy, okay? What they can do though is melt their wax layer if you use your torch to pop bubbles. You really wanna be careful with that when you're doing something like this. This particular candy mix has these kind of larger chocolate sixlet balls with them, which I thought was really cute, but I quickly learned that if those are sticking out after we pour the flood coat over this and we try to run our torch along that flood coat, the tops of those chocolate candy balls <laughs> are sticking out and they're gonna shed their wax coating right under that torch, okay? So that is the problem that I ran into with the first one of these that I made. Not so much with the second one because I kind of figured that out, but you just wanna be careful when you make that initial pass with your torch after you put the flood coat over this. Uh, you'll see what I mean by flood coat here in a little bit. Anyway, so once we've got the sprinkles on, we're just going to rearrange them with our little tweezers if we need to, like if you have too much of one element like kind of grouped together, I just sort of moved it around. You do need to be careful when you're sprinkling these on because once they're in there, it's kind of hard to move them around. Also, it's better if these are kind of sparse. You don't wanna have them too densely packed on there because the more densely packed these are, the harder it's going to be for you to get a really cl crystal clear finish because there's gonna be a lot of nooks and crannies for those bubbles to hide. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry for at least two to three hours before we pour what is our flood coat. So this is, eight ounces of mixed resin, okay? And we're just gonna pour this all over our sprinkles, being careful not to get any resin on the walls of our tray. If you do, just get a little paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and wipe that off really quick. We're going to kind of tilt around the tray to use gravity to make sure that we get it into every corner of the tray. And then I'm going to set this on a safe level surface to dry for at least eight to 12 hours. Then you're gonna repeat this same step <laughs> until you get this totally level, until you fill the tray enough to completely cover all your candies, okay? so. That's kind of the hardest part about this is it's a lot of resin pouring and you can't really do it all at once. If you do it all at once, you risk getting a lot of bubbles in your resin. Also, it's just a lot of resin to mix and pour at once. And some resins don't, you can't pour more than a quarter inch thick at a time, okay? So I ended up having to do, I think, three pours over this to get it totally level and smooth. Um, but other than that, it's really not that bad. It's really just pouring resin and waiting and pouring resin and waiting. Obviously the bubbles are an issue. So any kind of proactive steps you can take when mixing your resin to stop that from happening, the better because you wanna avoid putting your torch on this. So for example, warming part a before you mix you know pour and mix or letting your mixed resin sit for a little bit for the bubbles to rise before you pour it things like that will definitely help but yeah so that's it i mean <laughs> it's really that easy um once this is finally dry we want to let it sit for a good 72 hours before we use it 
All right, and we used Alumalite's Amazing Clearcast. This epoxy resin formula is FDA compliant. We can use it uh, to serve food on as like indirect contact with food. So if you were to serve cookies or something on this, I would maybe put some doilies or something under there. Um, but yeah, I think this is the perfect tray for your holiday decor. I think it's so cute. You could put some little holiday tchotchkes on there, put it on a coffee table or whatever. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. If you like this video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flint Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.